guys, Portal Master here, and in today's video, I have got some exciting news for anyone that's a fan of Starlink. The first official content update has dropped today, and we're going to be breaking down everything that is new in this update, talking about our thoughts and opinions on this update, what could be next for the game, so we've got a lot that we're going to go over. So without further ado, let's jump right into actually breaking down what is new with this holiday gift update, as they are calling it. Let's jump right in. And foremost, they are introducing a brand new unit known as a Sentinel. Sentinels are basically these gravity weapons, these gravity machines, as you can see a picture of them right there, and basically you have to shoot them, they'll absorb your shots, and you got to, you know, manipulate them in your favor and actually be able to take them down. You can read the description right there, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but basically they're new gravity units. Now, this is actually really exciting news because one of my biggest complaints with the initial game was it did seem like there was a lack of variety in terms of enemies to actually take down and I feel like introducing something like the Sentinels right here is a great way to fix that problem you know to go ahead and start right off the bat I feel like this is a great addition to the game and I think it's going to add a lot of variety and I'm going to personally be very excited to actually check out an entire new archetype of enemy I think that's personally really cool the second thing that they've added to this game does actually make combat a little bit more difficult however it's not technically a new unit it is known as an obelisk as you guys know there are imp hives scattered all throughout the planets in atlas and the imp hives are now a little bit more difficult to take down because of these obelisks. Obelisks shoot lasers at you when you try to take down an imp hive. So it does make the imp hives a little bit more destructive, a little bit more annoying to take down. However, that's actually probably pretty good because I realized that imp hives were kind of a joke in the late game. In the late game, you basically just had Mason's ability. He was like, nuke the imp hive. Or you had Startail, and she was like, nuke the imp hive. And it's no longer like that because, you know, it's actually going to be a little bit more difficult to take down these things because they're going to be firing lasers at you. I don't know if they've actually increased the health, so you may just still be able to nuke the Imp Hive. However, it does actually make, you know, standard fighting of the Imp Hive a little bit better, and I think it is going to be a nice little improvement to actually try and take down these things and turn them from less of a nuisance of just trying to shoot the stupid imps while they're running at you and actually make it a little bit more difficult to take the things down, and I think it's going to be a great addition. So, I'm pretty uh, happy about the Obelisks, too, as well as the Sentinels. They've also added a ton of new flora and fauna to the game. I have to read this off a list. They have added snow catchies, prickle burrs, gloom gobs, and bile bombs, ash worms, and sand worms. So they've added like six new types of flora and fauna. Now, I didn't. I don't really know if we really needed more of these things, to be honest. You know, the flora and fauna, I wouldn't say were like really a highlight of the game for me, but it is still kind of cool. It does add to the No Man's Sky feel of Starlink, though, because with more variety of plants and animals and, and stuff. I do think that that actually makes the game I'll just feel a little bit more alive. I don't think that that was a problem with the game when it first came out, but I do think that it is a great addition to the game and does actually, you know, help add just a little bit more variety. So I think that's going to be a cool and exciting thing to go and look around. Finally, for the actual big stuff that they've added, they've added a brand new type of sort of mission type objective, if you will, and it is outlaw sieges or outlaw fortification sieges. I can't remember exactly what they're called, but basically the idea is that while we've been trying to take down the Forgotten Legion on all the different planets, the outlaws have popped up and now they have some fortifications on the planet. So I actually think that that is cool because no longer do the outlaws just feel like they're this thing that attack you in space and randomly will attack you on the ground, you know, at random intervals. But this actually makes them feel like they're another faction, and it actually makes them feel like they're actually more part of the, the working system that goes on in Starlink. And I personally think that's something that's really cool, because, you know, with them actually being able to craft fortifications, with them actually being able to do new things, they'll actually feel like a threat. I feel like in the base game, they didn't feel like much of a threat. They kind of just felt like a nuisance, more or less. But now that you've actually got to go take down their fortifications, I do think that it adds an extra layer of sort of this dynamic solar system environment that's going on. So I also think it's a great addition to add these outlaw fortifications. I think that's great, and that's just a cool addition overall. 
They've also added a couple of new ways to get Electrum. I don't really think that this was a problem in the base game, trying to get Electrum, but I do think it's cool that they are adding new cool ways to get them. The first way is called a Spirit of Electrum. It is a sort of this creature that roams around, and when you defeat it or shoot it, it basically drops Electrum. Cool new way to get Electrum. I think that's kind of cool um, to have it. Like a, it's another new creature type enemy thing, but it's not actually hostile. So it's, it's still a cool addition to the game, but it's not like you actually have to fight it all, but still pretty cool. Another new thing they've added is Electrum Asteroids. So now while you're, you know, sailing through hyperspace, you do have a chance to find Electrum Asteroids, meaning that you'll actually be able to pick up some money while floating through space, which is kind of cool. It does make sense that there would be valuable asteroids out there in space. So I do approve of this change as well. I approve of all the changes. And the final new addition they've got to this game is Photo Mode. So, you know, I don't Really, I guess it's kind of an, a cool addition. It's not something that I'll enjoy playing around with, and you can read all the specifics there. But for those of you that do enjoy playing around, trying to get screenshots, you know, I know a lot of people would take, like, Horizon Zero Dawn, go into photo mode, and do all kinds of cool stuff with that. So photo modes are very cool. It's just not something that I enjoy personally. But I definitely, I, I appreciate that they added this for people that do enjoy things like photo mode. So overall, this holiday gift update, or whatever you want to call it, is pretty cool. It seems that we're getting sort of monthly updates at this point. We got that first update in November after the game came out that fixed a whole bunch of bugs. We got the next update now in December that's actually adding some new content. It doesn't actually add any new post-game content, which is really what I want. I want more post-story content other than just going around and trying to blow up the Forgotten Legion. It's cool, but I do think that it, there could be a little bit more to it. So I'm still really excited to see what this brings. Obviously, this update was planned before the game came out. I think that's fairly obvious that any update that comes out two months later after the game, you know, was probably already planned beforehand. So I'm going to be really interested to see what they do as time goes on and we move into sort of the post-launch stuff that's like really designed to be added on to the game. I feel like this makes the game more complete rather than adding on to it before. So it's going to be interesting to see what they pull out. I'm happy with the subject, don't get me wrong but I'm just really excited to see where they can go with this because I do think that this is a good update. I just think that there's still a lot more potential that this game could have, so I'm still very excited to see what could come in new updates. This update is live now. As of a few hours ago, it was officially live, so go check it out. Go download it. Go tell me what you guys think. Tell me what you think down in the comments specifically about all this update, um, whether you've played it, whether you haven't got a chance to play it. Just tell me what you think in general down in the comments, and maybe even tell me what you'd still like to see in future updates. Do you like this update? Whatever. Just tell me all that stuff down there in the comments. Anyways, that is all I have for you guys today. This has been Portal Master. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and shout out to all my patrons on Patreon, especially the Collector Creepypasta, Portal Power TV, and Nacho S. See you guys next time.